The desire of gold is not for gold. It is for the means of freedom and benefit. Ralph Waldo Emerson In this video of BIS Stocks, we will be discussing about hallmarking and we have organized our discussion under seven sections. 1. What is hallmarking? 2. Role of BIS in hallmarking. 3. Registration of jewelers. 4. Recognition of essaying and hallmarking center. 5. Automation of essaying and hallmarking center and generation of traceability code. 6. Surveillance of jewelers and essaying and hallmarking center. 7. Consumer benefits. What is hallmarking? Hallmarking is the accurate determination and official recording of the proportionate content of precious metal in precious metal articles. Hallmarks are used in many countries to depict the purity of the jewellery and is marked after rigorous testing of the jewellery. Role of BIS in Hallmarking Gold is too soft to withstand wear. Therefore, for jewellery making, Gold is always alloyed with some other metal. The need for alloying of gold also makes public extremely vulnerable to excessive adulteration. Detection of adulteration in gold is difficult without performing technical tests. It was in this background that Government of India took cognizance of the need for protecting consumers. A mandate was therefore given to Reserve Bank of India's Standing Committee on Gold and Precious Metals to look into the issues relating to standardization of gold products and introduction of gold hallmarking in the country. The committee identified Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, in the year 2000 as the sole agency to operate the hallmarking scheme in India and entrusted BIS with the task of implementing hallmarking scheme to protect the consumer against cheating, develop export competitiveness and make India a leading market for gold jewellery in the world. The scheme for hallmarking of silver articles was launched later in 2005. It is pertinent to see what BIS Act rules and regulations say about hallmarking. BIS hallmarking scheme is operated as per provisions of Section 14 and Section 15 of BIS Act 2016. Section 14 deals with registration of jewellers and recognition of essaying and hallmarking centre. And Section 15 mentions that only jewellers registered with BIS can sell hallmarked jewellery conforming to the requirements of standard. Further, as per Section 29.2 of BIS Act 2016. Any person who contravenes the provisions of subsections 6 or 8 of Section 14 or Section 15 shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine which shall not be less than 1 lakh rupees but may extend up to five times the value of goods or articles produced or sold or offered to be sold or affixed or applied with a standard mark including hallmark or with both. As per Section 49 of this BIS Rules 2018, the consumer is entitled to get compensation in case of substandard jewellery sold to him. Such compensation shall be two times the amount of difference calculated on the basis of shortage of purity for the weight of such articles sold and the testing charges. The detailed process of grant, operation, renewal and cancellation of certificate of registration of jewellers, recognition of essaying and hallmarking centre and licence for refinery or mint are described in three chapters of Hallmarking Regulations 2018. What is BIS Hallmarking Scheme? The two main pillars of BIS Hallmarking Scheme are jewellers and essaying and hallmarking centres. The jeweller registers with BIS for selling hallmark jewellery and sends the jewellery for hallmarking to BIS recognized essaying and hallmarking centres. Essaying and hallmarking centres are the centres where the jewellery is tested. The essaying and hallmarking centres test the jewellery and if the jewellery is found complying to the requirements of BIS standard, the jewellery is hallmarked. This hallmark jewellery is then returned back to the jeweller. In India, hallmarking is done on gold and silver jewellery artefacts. 
and the hallmarked jewellery consists of four marks. The first is the logo of the BIS. The second is the purity grade that the item was tested for. Like for gold of 22 carats, it is 22K916. For silver of fineness 9 to 5, it is 9 to 5. The third mark is the identification mark of the assaying and hallmarking center where the jewellery is tested. And the fourth mark is the logo or code of the jeweller who has got the jewellery hallmarked. With the introduction of six-digit alphanumeric traceability code in the laser marking, the four marks which used to be put in hallmarked jewellery is replaced with three marks. They are BIS logo, purity mark, six-digit alphanumeric code which will be unique for each jewellery article. Do you know that in the year 2001 and 2006, two surveys were done of non-hallmarked gold jewellery in various cities and 90% of the jewellery failed in the survey. The average shortage in purity was 13% and the highest shortage in purity was up to 44%. The benefits of this scheme are both to consumers and jewellers. Consumers get the purity which he pays for and thus gets value for his money. He also gets third-party guarantee that if later on it is found that the jewellery is short of the declared purity, compensation for the same has to be paid by the jeweller. Similarly, Hallmark offers a lot of benefits to the jewellers as well. Not only are they assured that their supplier is giving them genuine products, but they also earn the customer's trust by selling Hallmark jewellery. The standards that are followed for hallmarking of gold or silver jewellery artefacts are IS 1417-2016 Gold and Gold Alloys Jewellery or Artefacts Fineness and Marking This standard specifies based on gold content two grades of fine gold of 999 purity and standard gold of 995 purity used for manufacture of bullions and coins and three grades of gold alloy of 916, 750 and 585 purity used in the manufacture of jewellery artefacts. Thus gold jewellery of only 22 carats, 18 carats and 14 carats can be hallmarked under this standard. In the standard, no negative tolerance is permitted on the declared fineness. The standard also specified that the gold jewellery artefacts offered for hallmarking should be free from cadmium and other platinum group metals. Cadmium, as we all know, is carcinogenic, and to prevent the ill effects of cadmium on the health of artisans, this requirement of cadmium-free solder and jewellery is specified in the standard. Registration of jewellers for gold jewellery artifact is done as per this standard. This standard has been amended to include additional grade of 20, 23 and 24 carat of gold jewellery or artifacts. IS 14018-2009 Determination of gold is gold bullion, gold alloys and gold jewellery artifacts cupellation fire assay method. This standard prescribes the cupellation or fire assay method for assaying of gold in gold bullion, gold alloys and gold jewellery artifacts covered in IS 1417. As per fire assay method mentioned in the standard, the gold alloys are incorporated with silver, compounded with lead and cupelled in a cupellation furnace until a precious metal button is obtained. After flattening and rolling, the silver is extracted in nitric acid and the gold weighed. Possible systematic errors in the procedure are eliminated by assaying standard proof samples in parallel. This fire assay method specified in the standard is identical to the method specified in international standard ISO 11426. This ensures that in case of export or jewellery, there is no variation in test result as the test method is accepted internationally. IS 2112-2014 Silver and Silver Alloys Jewellery Artifacts Fineness and Marking This standard specifies three grades of fine silver 49995 and 999 and six grades of silver alloys 990, 970, 925, 900, 835 800 used in the manufacture of jewellery artifacts of silver based on their silver content. Silver alloys used for the manufacturing of jewellery artifacts shall be free from cadmium and lead. In this case also, no negative tolerance is permitted on the specified silver content. 
Registration of jewelers for silver jewelry artifact is done as per this standard. IS 2113-2014 Assaying silver in silver and silver alloys. Methods Aligned with ISO 13756-1997 for volumetric method. This standard prescribes two methods for determination of silver in silver alloys gravimetric method and volumetric method which is also known as potentiometric method. This standard has been aligned with ISO 13756 for volumetric method. In gravimetric method, the sample is dissolved in nitric acid and silver is precipitated as silver chloride, filtered through previously weighed sintered glass crucible, washed, dried and weighed. In the case of potentiometric method, the sample is dissolved in dilute nitric acid. The silver content of the resulting solution is determined by dehydration with standard sodium chloride or potassium chloride solution using potentiometric indication of the equivalence point. IS 15820-2009 General Requirements for Establishment and Operation of Assaying and Hallmarking Centers This standard covers management and technical requirements for setting up assaying and hallmarking centers. The standard is based on IS ISO IEC 17025-2005 version. The standard lists the test equipments required in assaying and hallmarking centers and various control required in the centers to hallmark the jewelry which confirms to the requirement of the standard. The standard is the basis for recognition of assaying and hallmarking centers and for development of their quality administrative and technical system. Registration of Jewelers Hallmarking is an assurance of quality and for selling hallmarked jewellery, a jeweller need to register with BIS. And how can they do this? Earlier, the jeweller has to submit the hard copy of the application form along with enclosures and draft of fees to nearest BIS branch office and the registration was granted in five working days. But now the entire process has been made online and the jeweller can do the registration sitting in his shop in five to ten minutes. Any jeweller willing to obtain certificate of registration for selling hallmarked gold and silver jewellery or artefacts shall apply online in the BIS portal. After visiting the Manak online portal www.manakonline.in, the applicant will be able to see a number of tiles displayed on the screen. Click on the hallmarking tile. Doing so, the applicant will be directed to a window where various tiles consisting of information related to hallmarking is available. Now, he needs to click on the login tile that is situated on the top right corner of the window screen. This will direct the applicant to a window where he or she has to register himself or herself by filling all the personal details as desired in the registration form. All fields marked mandatory have to be filled by the applicant. After successful registration, the applicant needs to log in using the credentials that were used earlier for registration. After logging in, the applicant will be directed to an online application window wherein all the required details such as outlet details like name of the firm, its address, location and turnover etc needs to be filled by the applicant. After filling the form, applicant need to click the submit button and the registration is instantly granted for certificate of registration is valid for lifetime. The certificate of registration consists of the name and address of the BIS branch office which has granted the registration and address of the outlet to which registration is granted. Apart from that, the certificate also specifies the type of article for which registration was done, whether the jewellery and artefacts are of gold or silver. Corresponding to the type of article, its Indian standard is also mentioned in column. So, it is always advisable to buy hallmark jewellery from BIS registered jeweller. But how do we know which jeweller is registered with BIS for selling hallmark jewellery in your area? The list of jewellers registered with BIS are available on BIS website. On the outside of the sales outlet, the registered jeweller shall display the logo of BIS with the wording Hallmarked Jewellery Available for Sale. Certificate of Registration issued by BIS shall be displayed by the jeweller in the shop. Jeweller shall have magnifying glass of minimum 
10x magnification to show hallmark to customer in the hallmarked jewelry. Relation of fineness with heritage and details of hallmarking charges shall be displayed by the jeweler. However, always take the bill or invoice of the hallmarked jewelry purchased by you. Additionally, every bill they issue for hallmarked jewelry must carry the details of the hallmark in case of any dispute or redressal in the future. The things that should be mentioned are Description of article Net weight of precious metal Purity in carat and fineness Hallmarking charges And it should also be mentioned that consumers can get the purity tested at the A&H centers if they wish. Recognition of essaying and hallmarking center Before hallmarking, the jewelry is subjected to rigorous testing. And only if the jewellery passes the test, the hallmark is put on it. Let us understand what the test, the jewellery or artefacts is subjected to before hallmarking by essaying and hallmarking centre. At the essaying and hallmarking centre, the jewellery or artefact is received from BIS registered jewellers only. After receipt, each jewellery is subjected to preliminary examination on XRF machine. Here the fineness is verified and absence of prohibited elements viz cadmium, iridium and ruthenium is checked. If any of the prohibited elements is present, the jewellery is rejected. Once that is determined, the sampling is done with the help of scraping, micro-drilling and cutting etc. The next step is fire assaying, which is done through a process that complies with international standards. The sample of 125 mg to 250 mg is weighed, mixed with silver, wrapped in lead foil and the ball is placed in a cupel in the cupellation furnace under oxidizing atmosphere at about 1050 to 1100 degrees centigrade. All the impurities are oxidized and bead of pure gold and silver is obtained. This is then followed by parting in nitric acid in which the silver dissolves and pure gold cornet is left. This is then weighed on a microbalance and the fineness is calculated. If the fineness is more than or equal to the declared fineness, that is 916 or above for 22 carat, the sample is considered passing and the entire jewellery lot is hallmarked with the four marks on a laser marking machine. The hallmarked jewellery is then returned to the jeweller. Only after following these steps, the jewellery can be hallmarked which takes about 4 to 5 hours. Thus, beware of the jewellers who say that they can get the jewellery hallmarked instantly. These stringent norms are the reasons why every essaying and hallmarking centre are chosen carefully by the BIS. Any essaying centre set up in accordance with requirements specified in IS 15820-2009 for essaying and hallmarking of gold and or silver jewellery or artefacts shall apply online in the BIS portal. After visiting the Manak online portal www.manakonline.in, the applicant will be able to see a number of tiles in different colours displayed on this screen. Click on the hallmarking tile. Doing so, the applicant will be directed to a window where various styles consisting of information related to hallmarking is available. Now he or she needs to click on the login tile that is situated on the top right corner of the window screen. This will direct the applicant to a window where he or she has to register himself or herself by filling all the personal details as desired in the registration form. Starting with the email ID, password, name, date of birth, nationality, mobile number, identity details and hint question. All fields marked mandatory have to be filled by the applicant. After successful registration, the applicant needs to log in using the credentials that were used earlier for registration. After logging in, the applicant will be directed to an online application window where all the requisite details need to be filled by the applicant. After that, mandatory documents shall be uploaded as required in the form. These are 
proof of establishment of the firm or company proof of the address of the premises proof of identity of the signatory map indicating location of the premises from the nearest landmark quality manual affidavit come undertaking in form 5 form available in BIS hallmarking regulation 2018 automation of essaying and hallmarking center and generation of traceability code automation of workflow in essaying and hallmarking center and generation of unique traceability code BIS has developed digital solution wherein the entire workflow in essaying and hallmarking center is automated and made online the jeweler will submit the request for hallmarking online and the data for all the processes undertaken in the center from inward receipt and weightment, XRF, sampling, fire assay and laser marking is maintained online and can be monitored on real-time basis. At the end of the testing, a unique six-digit alphanumerical code is generated from the BIS server for each jewellery article and shall be laser marked by the essaying and hallmarking center on the jewellery along with BIS logo and purity mark. Also, net weight of each jewellery item will be captured and entered in system. This jewellery will then be sent back to jeweller. BIS registered jeweller will log into the web portal using the login credentials issued by BIS and apply for hallmarking request. Here the jeweler selects a BIS recognized essaying and hallmarking center from which he wishes to get the articles hallmarked. After that, the jeweler needs to fill up the requisite details under jeweler item declaration details, which are item category, quantity, weight, and the declared purity of the articles being dispatched to the essaying and hallmarking center. Then he needs to select the option submit to AHC. Once the essaying and hallmarking center physically receives the dispatched jewelry articles, they perform a visual inspection to detect the presence of any unauthorized marking, excessive or substandard solder, etc. Then the user at the reception desk logs into the web portal and acknowledges the request received from the jeweler under the list of received request for hallmarking. After this, the net weight and quantity of the articles as declared by the jeweler is verified physically and the observed weight of the articles at the center is entered in the portal and the form is submitted. Now, the quality manager of the essaying and hallmarking center logs into the web portal using his login credentials and finds the list of jeweler requests accepted at the reception desk of the center. The QM then selects the option to create job card for the accepted lot and the system generates a unique job card number for that lot. In the next stage, the QM tags the articles with the tag IDs generated by the system. Here, he also has the option to accept or reject the articles depending on the visual inspection for the presence of any unauthorized marking, excessive or substandard solder, etc., followed by his remarks. The form is then submitted by the QM. Now the XRF operator at the AHC logs into the web portal and finds the job card details of the items that need to be examined using XRF. In any stage, the jeweler details are not accessible to the XRF operator as an effort to maintain credibility of the entire essaying and hallmarking process. The software has the provision to automatically capture the XRF readings of the sample and display the composition of the elements, including the prohibited elements, as detected during XRF analysis. At this stage, the XRF operator can compare the observed purity of the sample with the declared purity by the jeweler, and if the difference in purity is found to be greater than 5 ppt, the article is rejected automatically by the system and it cannot be sent for further sampling and assaying. Once the XRF operator submits the form for sampling, the quality manager can find the list of job card numbers with the jeweler's name on his dashboard, which needs to be acknowledged by him. Now in the sampling portal, 
the QM selects the sampling method and corresponding to it the minimum number of assays to be carried out and the number of articles from which the sample has to be scrapped gets populated by the system in accordance with the sampling plan mentioned in Indian Standard 15,820. On satisfaction, the QM submits the form for essaying. The submitted form for fire essaying is populated on the dashboard of SA Master as Items list for fire essaying. The SA Master now clicks on fire essaying option corresponding to the job number of the article submitted for essaying. This directs the essay master to fire essaying sheet where he needs to fill the weight of the button obtained after melting of the sample in melting furnace. The weight of the essay gold strip obtained after annealing and rolling of the button is entered in the form along with the weights of lead and copper added to it. Similarly, the weight of check gold is also entered into the portal along with the weights of silver, lead and copper added to it. After cupellation process, the bead is annealed and rolled into cornet, which is subjected to parting process that is separation of silver from the assay sample. The weight of the cornet obtained after the process of parting is also recorded in the portal. Having filled all the requisite weights, the system automatically populates the fineness of each sample along the mean fineness. Only when the mean fineness is found to have no negative tolerances as compared to the observed fineness, will the SA master submit for hallmarking unique ID generation. HUID will be requested by quality manager for the articles which have passed fire essay test. Central server will provide a six digit alphanumeric HUID against those articles in job or lot which have passed fire essay test. The QM selects the option to generate HUID. Upon selecting Generate HUID in the HUID request form, the HUID gets populated from the central server against all the articles which were recorded in the job card. It is then submitted for laser marking. In the HUID printing desk, laser print operator will get list of HUID against each tag ID in a job. Laser print operator needs to print HUID along with BIS mark and purity through laser printer corresponding to same physical tag and job tag ID. After laser marking, the article is weighed and the weight is recorded automatically in the software, which is again incorporated to establish credibility in the workflow of essaying and hallmarking centers. Once submitted, a delivery voucher gets generated at the end of essaying and hallmarking center. It consists of various details like delivery voucher number and its date of generation, AHC and jeweler details, details of the accepted and rejected items, and weight of article received by the jeweler, weight of article observed at AHC, weight of article returned to the jeweler, and weight of the cornet. This voucher, along with the articles, is sent to the jeweler. Surveillance of Jewelers and Essaying and Hallmarking Center After grant of registration to jeweler and recognition of Essaying and Hallmarking Center, BIS has laid down a system for monitoring the work being done by them. BIS periodically visit the sales outlet and randomly draws sample of hallmarked article and gets it tested according to the relevant Indian standard at BIS lab to ascertain the purity of the precious metal content in the sample. If the sample drawn is found failing, action is taken both against the jeweler and essaying and hallmarking center. The entire market surveillance activity has been made online through mobile app, which will authenticate the audit activity through geotagging and the report of market surveillance will be filled online. There is facility of uploading photograph of the samples drawn for testing. The test request for testing will also be generated online and sent to testing laboratory. BIS carries out periodic surveillance audit of the ANH center. If any ANH center is found not conforming to the requirements, 
action is taken by BIS against Erring Center as per laid down procedure so that credibility of scheme is maintained. The audit process of ENH centers has also been made online. The auditor fills and submits the report online, which is then moved through system to the granting authority and the recognition is granted online. With this, the applicant is able to monitor processing of their applications on real-time basis. Consumer benefits. Such is the guarantee of hallmarking that if ever the consumer suspects any discrepancy in the hallmarked jewelry they have purchased, they can go to any BIS recognized assaying center and get their hallmarked jewelry retested themselves by paying a small fee. BIS follows a well-established complaint redressal procedure. Complaints are recorded centrally at the Complaints Management and Enforcement Department, CMED. Complaints can be made both offline and online. Online complaint can be made through mobile app, BIS Care, or by use of consumer engagement portal. However, considering the fact that mobile phones have become an easy mode to access internet and communicate, a mobile app based on Android platform has been developed which would provide the same facilities accessible through mobile phone. The Android-based mobile application provides consumers the facility to access the complete complaint management system. Consumers can lodge their grievances, preferably by supporting evidence, whether it's related to quality or purity of hallmarked jewellery, artifacts they have purchased, or if someone is selling hallmarked jewellery or artifacts without having valid registration certificate. How BIS Care app works. The consumer can register himself with BIS through a simplified one-time registration module. The user is required to enter his name and mobile number with an option to provide his email ID as well. The user can use the app after an initial email verification done through a one-time password. The app provides the consumer with facility to lodge complaints regarding any of the following issues quality of hallmark jewellery or artefacts, misuse of hallmark, misleading advertisements related to hallmark. The complaint is then investigated and if there is any discrepancy found, the consumers are entitled to a remuneration of twice the difference between the grade of gold that the article claimed on the bill versus the actual grade of gold present from the jeweller from where they have purchased the jewellery. Besides this, action is also taken both against the jeweler who has got the jewellery hallmarked and the assaying and hallmarking centre who has hallmarked the jewellery, which can lead even to cancellation of their licences. Only BIS recognised assaying and hallmarking centre can laser mark the hallmark on the jewellery or artefacts and only BIS registered jewellers can sell hallmark jewellery. One point to note is that if a jeweller asks for extra money as charges for hallmarking, they cannot ask for more than Rs 35 for every article of gold and Rs 25 for every silver article, as these are the charges they pay to the assaying centre. Additionally, the charges do not depend on the weight or complexity of the jewellery, as the fee is paid per article and not on any other criteria. The benefits of hallmarking are huge and there is an ever-growing demand for hallmarked jewellery. This is the reason why an increasing number of jewellers are coming forward to be registered and to facilitate the hallmarking process. An increasing number of essaying centres are also coming up so that the jewellers need not travel long distances for getting the jewellery hallmarked. Gold is a symbol of purity and its quality should never be compromised. And that is the reason mandatory hallmarking for gold jewellery artefacts has been decided by the government. Mandatory hallmarking order is being implemented in a phased manner. In the first phase, it will be implemented into 56 districts where there is at least one assaying and hallmarking centre and will be applicable for three carats of jewellery, 14, 18 and 22 carats only. Exemptions to the mandatory hallmarking order are any article meant for export which conforms to any specification required by the foreign buyer, an article with weight less than 2 grams, 
an article which is in course of consignment from outside India to an assaying and marking center in India recognized as per the Bureau of Indian Standard Hallmarking Regulations 2018 for hallmarking. Any article which is intended to be used for medical, dental, veterinary, scientific or industrial purposes. Any article of gold thread. Any manufactured article which is not substantially complete and which is intended for further manufacture. Gold bullion in any shape of bar, plate, sheet, foil, rod, wire, strip, tube or coin. Export and re-import of jewellery as per trade policy of Government of India. Jewellery for international exhibitions. Jewellery for domestic business to business exhibitions approved by government agency. Special categories of jewellery like Kundan, Polki and Jadau. Jewellers with the annual turnover of up to Rs 40 lakhs per annum. Gold watch and fountain pen. Even after mandatory hallmarking, the households can sell the jewellery in their possession to a jeweller anytime without hallmarking. Complaint about purity or sale of hallmark jewellery by an unregistered jeweller may be made through BS Care app. Always buy hallmarked gold or silver jewellery and artefacts. Only jewellers registered with BIS can sell hallmark jewellery. Hallmarking charges are rupees 35 per article for gold and rupees 25 per article for silver. Always take a bill indicating the details of hallmark jewellery. Finally, we take you to eBIS portal where all the details related to hallmarking are available. After visiting the Manak online portal www.manakonline.in, the applicant will be able to see a number of tiles displayed on the screen. Click on the hallmarking tile. Doing so, the applicant will be directed to a window where various tiles consisting of information related to hallmarking is available. Hallmarking has been a boon for us, a total blessing. Earlier customers used to walk into a store and they needed assurance that what we were selling was pure and there was always an underlying worry. But today with hallmarking, they know that they're buying pure. There's a stamp of purity involved to it. There's a sense of confidence and they want to come back again and again to us. Buying gold is a matter of trust and emotions. With the help of BIS, it is easy for us for convince to our customers, I request and suggest always buy BIS Hallmark Jewelry only. I started 16 years ago with the Hargit Jewelers. In the beginning, I didn't get any response for 4-5 years. Then I took a license for the Bharati Manak Bureau. तब से मेरे दुकानदारी की ग्रोथ भी हुई है कस्टमर को समझाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती कोई चिक चिक नहीं है और मुझे भी खूब संतुष्ट होते हैं इस चीज़ के कि कि हाँ कि मैंने सामान भी अच्छा दिया है और इसे काफ़ी दुकानदारी पे फर्क पड़ा है मेरे और ट्रस्ट भी काफ़ी बढ़ गया है लोगों का मेरे ऊपर कि हाँ यहाँ सोना अच्छा मिलता है बढ़िया मिलता है इससे मेरी दुकानदारी काफ़ी अभी सेट हो गई है गोल्ड है Previously, that used to happen because of the name of the jewellers. But today, with BIS Hallmark, we can trust any jeweller across the country. In BIS, purity is pure gold. You can sell it in any place.